Well, I'm sitting here, resting on the river bank, and I'm trying to figure out just who to thank. I got the birds and the trees and the mountains and the bees. I've got about anything that I please. And in the river below the shine, there lives a fish that is oh so fine. In the trout world, he has lots of bull. They call him the bull. Oh. kind of bull I want to tell you about. It's a Montana native called the Bull Trout. Give it a shout. Bull Trout. Bull Trout. Bull Trout. They live in the cold, and they live in the clean. Good trout habitat, if you know what I mean. But the bull's in trouble, the numbers are low. They need our help, so here's some things you should know about the bull trout. Give it a shout, bull trout. Montana. One of the first things people think of is water. And to many, Montana water means Montana fishing. In western Montana, fishing means trout fishing. And when people think of trout fishing, the last kind of trout that usually comes to mind is the bull trout. One of the main reasons I, I feel that bull trout has been in decline is many of us have not been taking notice of rare species and the bull trout is one of those rare animals and I think it's through neglect. Uh, neglect from all of us. Uh, not, just, not just the loggers, not just the miners, not just the ranchers. Um, fisheries biologists are part of it too. The reason bull trout are, are so important to us is that they are our indicator of the health of cold water streams in western Montana. Bull trout require the coldest. They're going to be the first to disappear. Rainbow and brown trout, which are more abundant and more often sought for by anglers, are next. No fish to fish for? Now that's a scary thought. So by protecting existing bull trout habitat and restoring places that used to have bull trout is not only good for the bull, our other kinds of trout will benefit in the process. The bad news for bull trout is that there are a lot of reasons for their troubles. But the good news is we can all do something to help Montana's largest native trout. Biologists are using electricity to capture bull trout in order to find out how many bull trout we have and how they're doing. Once the biologists gather all the information they need, fish are returned to the river. However, a few take a side trip to the streamside surgery table. They are temporarily put to sleep, and when the fish wakes up, it will carry a tiny radio transmitter. It sends out an individual code. Every three or four seconds, it, it will, you'll, you'll hear a, what sounds like a, a cricket chirp. Start with the sutures. Probably take four of them. You can't feel a thing. Basically, the fish is on artificial life support, um, bathing the gills with a mixture of water and anesthetic, and that keeps oxygen and blood delivered to the fish, keeps it alive during the surgery, it's just like the operating table. After a short recovery, bull trout will swim away, and thanks to the radio, let go. biologists know where they go, or at least where they want to go. Biologists began to find out about the places bull trout like, particularly during the critical fall spawn or egg laying time. It became clear that a great deal of cooperation from the people who live and work next to bull trout habitat 
was needed for bull trout recovery to work. When uh, the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks approached me and asked me if I'd be willing to cooperate with them in restoring the streams, I was a bit reluctant at first because it seemed to be running counter to my agricultural interests. They suggested it was critical habitat to the bull trout and that the bull trout were becoming relatively rare. For me, it was an education because as a kid, bull trout were the predators that you tried to rid yourself of. So it was a new awakening for me as far as the importance of bull trout in terms of indicating what kind of water quality you have. It became clear that there were a number of things that I didn't realize as far as trout habitat. Uh, we had replaced bridges over the years with culverts and some of those culverts turned out to be fish barriers. Culverts are long straight tubes of fast moving water, often too fast for fish to move through. So when possible, the culverts were removed and bridges put in place over the natural stream bed. When large culverts went under the highway, rocks were placed in the culvert to slow the speed of the water, allowing the fish to swim upstream. And we planted some shrubs. Uh, we also started doing some, some fencing, uh, cross fencing, which improved my agricultural rotation of the stock and I also used some temporary solar electric fencing for keeping the animals out of the stream. We've seen quite an increase in spawning activity by various types of species of trout in these streams. The rainbow, the cutthroat, uh, brown trout, and even bull trout. And I'm very proud of the efforts my family has made along with the agencies in restoring these critical streams but not all streams where bull trout want to live are this clean. After the female bull trout lays her eggs, she covers them with a layer of gravel. When soil erodes into a stream, the dirt can cover the eggs and smother them, killing the unborn trout. Biologists take samples of stream bottoms, then separate the material by how big or small it is in order to determine the amount of fine sediment in a stream. So this is material that's about a quarter of an inch here. And so material of this size and larger, this is the good stuff. This is the, this is the material that the water can flow through and the oxygen can get in and the waste products can get out. So this is what you're looking for in a stream to have a larger percentage of this and less of this. This is the bad stuff. You have material that's uh, you know, something like a, an eighth of an inch on down uh, anything less than a quarter of an inch can get in and clog up the holes in this gravel and clog up these holes in here uh, with silt and then the water can't flow through and the waste products can't get out and then the little fry under here can't push up through either and get out through the gravel to emerge. So this is the bad stuff, this is the good stuff and here you're looking at probably somewhere around a third of the material might be harmful to uh, fish that are spawning. So helping to limit the amount of erosion that goes on along a stream bank is one way we can all help bull trout. And for those who go fishing, there's another way. Bull trout are protected, which means if you catch one, you need to release it. So it's important to know what a bull trout looks like. And the best way is to look at the dorsal fin, the fin on their back. After you land the fish, wet your hands before touching it. Then carefully remove the hook and look at their top fin. If there's no black, you have a bull trout. And then carefully put it back. The fish in the background are bull trout, but the closest one isn't. There's black on the dorsal fin. This is a brook trout. Now the bull trout are the closest. So remember, if you catch a fish that looks like this, release it back into the stream and you will be helping recover one of Montana's native fish species, the bull trout. So all is not lost. There's some things to be done. The bull trout recovery has just begun. 
just figure they're a fish that adds to the fun of the outdoors of nature. Things under the sun. Don't look to others for things to do. Help for bull trout begins with me and with you. Like when you catch a fish, take a look at the fin. And if there's no black, put it back with a grin. Take charge, take the lead, do what's right, we'll succeed. Help get your folks and your friends up to speed. Don't put it in your sack. No, no, don't be a quack. No, no. The bull trout world is out of whack. So if there's no black, just put it back. If there's no black, just put it back. Yeah, yeah. If there's no black, just put it back. Uh-huh. If there's no black, just put it back. If there's no black, just put it back. <laughs>